Hi everyone, let's talk about multi-relation queries. So we have an entity relationship diagram. An entity relationship diagram is a way of structuring data based on entity sets, based on certain groupings, and connecting entities via a relationship to another entity. So how exactly do objects connect? For example, drinkers like beers. That's a connection that exists. But if we're breaking them up into subcomponents, if we're modularizing this idea or this notion of data, how exactly do we reconnect it for use later on? How does our query manipulate the information we have in our database that's stored to actually be used for whatever purpose we need it? What we can do here and what we often look at is the idea of incorporating these relations in the from clause. So for example, if I'm dealing with two or three tables, those two or three tables will show up in my from clause. So we have select, from, where. In our from clause, we add our relations that we need. Now, where it becomes a little bit more complicated is, well, what happens if relations, for example, if some of our tables have similar named attributes. For example, beers has an attribute name and bars has an attribute name. Well, how do we identify those differently? Previously, we saw that we can assign a relation, a temporary variable. For example, I could assign beers B and bars A, for example. Given those two assignments, that's fantastic. I've shortened, I've set a variable name to my relation. Well, it turns out that we can be very specific with what attribute we're talking about. And we do that by distinguishing the attributes by the same name, by prefixing them with whatever the relation is. So, for example, if beers is our relation, it would be beers dot attribute name. If it was bars, it would be bars dot attribute name. For example, if we wanted to join two relations, let's say likes and frequents, likes has the attributes drinker and beer, frequents has the attribute drinker and bar, and we want to find all the beers liked by at least one person who frequents Joe's bar. That's our task. How do we do that? Well, first we need to determine what our from looks like. We need to determine what tables do we need to utilize in our query. We know we need likes and we know we need frequents. So from likes, comma, frequents, those are the two tables we're going to be working with. Next is the condition that's imposed. So it says find the beers liked by at least one person. So that means that frequents.drinker must equal likes.drinker because we need to know what beers are liked by at least one person who frequents Joe's bar. So by connecting the name of the drinker from the likes table and the name of the drinker from the frequents table and checking to see where the bar so where those matches also match the bar's name as being Joe's bar. Then and only then will we retrieve or project the beer. So from likes and frequents where bar equals Joe's bar and frequents dot drinker equals likes dot drinker select beer. Now, there are other ways to tackle this same problem. We can use join um, statements or the we can use the join keyword to do this, but we're going to omit this for now and we'll talk about that a little bit later. If, for example, we wanted to cut down how we actually access this information, and you can refer to slide 11 on the full-blown PDF that's provided. We can actually shorten the name. So for example, likes 
we can shorten with L, frequence, we can shorten with F. That reduces the amount of characters we need to type. Uh, it provides us with a little bit more flexibility. But my favorite part about utilizing a short form in terms of assigning a variable to a table is that I can actually assign multiple variables to the same table name. For example, I could have frequency f1, comma frequency f2, comma frequency f3, um, and that would allow me to use the frequency table but multiple times. And that comes in handy once we start talking about this idea of subquerying or nested queries. Now, formally, when you look at multi relations, it's similar to, it's almost the same actually, to single relations. But the idea is you start with the product of all the relations from the from clause. So you have a giant table. Then you apply a selection condition in the where clause. So basically, this giant table gets cut down into a smaller portion. And then finally, that smaller subset of data gets projected onto a list which has attributes based on what the selection criteria is. So we start with a really big set of data from all these tables where some conditions apply. So reducing your set of data or your information pool, project that smaller data set based on what list of attributes I actually need for the query. And operationally, it's the exact same thing. You have one tuple variable for each relation in the from clause, and they just visit the combinations of each tuple, similar to what we saw previously. So for example, if we had these two tables, the tables have the attributes drinker and bar and drinker and beer, so for likes and frequents, you'll notice that there's a tuple variable T1, there's a tuple variable T2, and they'll iterate over each table. So T1 will iterate over your likes, T2 will iterate over your frequents, and when there's a match, they'll combine that and add that to that smaller subsetted pool. So you can think of this as being a nested for loop, for example, or a nested while loop. You perform some check, and when these checks are equal, well, that's actually what the output is. So that's what gets sent to output. Now, sometimes a query needs to use two copies of the same relation. This is where it becomes neat. You can actually do that by just renaming what the relation is, um, or you can call the same relation but give it two different tuple variable names, and it's sort of an easy way to get around that. So for example, if I wanted to query information from the beers table, so beers is a name and a manufacturer, and I wanted to find all the pairs of beers by the same manufacturer. So I don't want to produce any duplicates, for example, bud comma bud, um, and I don't want to produce the same duplicate twice, bud comma miller and miller comma bud, because it's the same tuple just in a different order. Um, so what I do here is I say from beers B1, from beers B2, so notice it's the same table, uh, just with two different variable names. I can combine them based on where their manufacturers are equal and where B1's dot name is less than B2's dot name. And then I can select both the name from B1 and B2 that gives us the tuple we're looking for.